chefs, you have arrived at the chopping block. I'm your host and chopped enthusiast, Samantha Senevratna. Who will win and who will be chopped? And I'm here to make you unchoppable. You've been chopped. By correcting common mistakes from chopped history. Let's see what today's lesson is, shall we? Uh-oh, I had a feeling this day would come. I think I'm about to enter the chop challenge. Four chefs, three courses, only one chance to win. The challenge, create an unforgettable meal from the mystery items hidden in these baskets. Ooh. Before time runs out. Time's up, this is what it's like. Our distinguished panel of chefs will critique their work. And one by one, they must face the dreaded chopping block. You have been chopped. Who will win the $10,000 prize? And who will be chopped? If you're a fan of the show like me, you've probably had the thought, hey, I could win Chopped. It takes guts to compete on Chopped. Believe me, I've seen it firsthand from the judges' table. The fritters themselves, they have nice flavor. I don't think they're sweet enough. I think the center is a little dense, and I think they could have been a little lighter. The red, white, and blue popsicle sauce was a little too sweet, and the potato chip and chocolate cluster just didn't work. And that's why you're chopped. The stakes are so high, but there are a few things that judges are always looking for. Each round is timed. When the clock runs out, our judges will critique your dishes on presentation, taste, and creativity. If your dish doesn't cut it, you will be chopped. So for my dish, I'm gonna try to hit on these points. Presentation, does the dish look as good as it tastes? Taste, making sure all the flavors are working together. Creativity, did I take chances and transform the ingredients? Let's see what we have. I have a jicama, a beautiful ripe pineapple, some avocados, and duck breasts. This is like the A-team of mystery baskets. Even though I'm getting a head start, I do want this to feel realistic. Can I get some mood lighting, please? That's better. Okay, Ted, let's do this. You must use every ingredient in that basket in some way. Time starts now. Okay, so now I'm gonna make my duck breast with pineapple salsa. I have four beautiful duck breasts here. First thing I need to do is score the skin side of my duck breasts. And that means I'm cutting through the skin and the fat. I'm not cutting through the meat. I'm just trying to make slits so that when I put it in the hot pan, the fat will render out of the skin. I'm gonna flip it over so that I can season the meat. We only need to season the meat side because basically we want the skin side to get super duper crispy, render all that fat, and we don't want any of the spices to burn. These look nice and clean. I love duck. Okay, I already put salt, so we'll put a little pepper. I'm gonna put these in a skillet over medium high heat. Basically, I wanna hit these with some high heat for a couple minutes just to get the skin nice and brown. And then after a few minutes, I'm gonna turn the heat down to medium, let it cook for 15 minutes, a little bit lower and slower so that the fat has a chance to really render out. So it's been about two minutes. I have a beautiful sear on my duck breast. And in the meantime, you can see I have a lot of excess fat. So I'm gonna get rid of some of that. I'm <laughs> making a giant mess. Okay, so once you get rid of a little bit of this fat, Turn the heat down to medium and let these cook for about 15 minutes more. Okay, these look beautiful. Look at that beautiful, crispy, golden skin. You can see from the side, the fat has pretty much rendered completely away. Now we'll flip these guys and cook them for another five minutes until the duck breasts are medium rare. So I have a clean cutting board and a clean set of tongs, and these guys look beautiful. I'm gonna let them rest on my board. So while these rest, I'm gonna make my pineapple salsa. All right, chefs, halfway in. Time is running out. 
So in this bowl I have some diced, beautifully ripe pineapple. That's about half a pineapple. To that I'm gonna add some jicama. So jicama is a tuber, just like potato or taro. It's sort of starchy and crunchy. It's really refreshing and delightful. It goes so well with the pineapple. And we're gonna add some fresh cilantro, of course. A lot of fresh cilantro. One Fresno chili. I have removed most of the ribs and seeds because I don't want my salsa to be too spicy, but if you prefer a little more heat, you can leave those in. Let's mix this together. We're really trying to balance our flavors. That's the key. So we have some sweet, we have some hot, we have some tart. To that I'm adding a couple of diced avocados. It's gonna be creamy and delicious. So nice with that crunchy jicama. Honestly, if you didn't have duck breast, you could just eat this with a couple tortilla chips and call it a day. And finally, we'll add some lime juice. We want to make sure that avocado stays nice and green, and we also want to add some brightness and acidity. Hit that with a little bit of salt. Okay, that looks so good. And that's all there is to it. Now we can build our plate. All right, chef's got to call the two-minute warning here. Two minutes to plate let's it up. Let's go, let's go. All right, here we are, the rush to the end, chefs. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, not kidding, 3, 2, 1. Time is up, please step back. There you have it. I made a seared duck breast with pineapple salsa. I like your idea, and I actually like the composition of this. I would like to criticize this dish. And I can't, because I just am eating it. It has a great taste. Aw, oh, thanks. I think I did pretty well myself. Mm. Thanks for watching, and remember, don't get chopped. Isn't that like a really old school, like, 